Hi folks and welcome back. Now with the end of the chili growing season upon us, you can see I've got my final harvest here looking wonderfully colourful. <laughs> I think it's finally time that I can reveal my chili pepper experiment results. Now you might remember back in June, I did a video on potting up my peppers into their final pots, which I'll link up here. And that is where I started this experiment. I was very kindly sent a range of products by a company called Greenhand Organic. And for the experiment, I had a treatment mix and a control mix. And for the treatment mix, I used four very specialist ingredients. Neem cake meal, malted barley powder, black soldier fly frass, which is always very difficult to say, and green sand are the ingredients that went into this kind of, this super mix. And Greenhand Organic are really confident in these products, but they kind of have been proven to work in what we'll call a specialist sector. And they were genuinely interested to see if they could have any results, if the ingredients could have any results in more of the hobby sector, you know, the allotment growers, the people like you and I particularly with a view to plants like peppers and tomatoes, you know, flowering and fruiting plants. So with that said, let's dive straight into the results. I've designed a super simple graph that you can see here, just displaying the total weight of my chili peppers in the non-treatment soils and the treatment soils. And at first it looks like the treatment has won out slightly, but this is a very surface level look. When we look at this graph, you can see that there's a huge amount of variation. If you were to look at this chart and guess, is the bar on the left the treatment or the bar on the right the treatment? I think you'd be hard pressed to guess. And now with the treatment highlighted, you can see that it might have made a difference for some of the species. There are some clear winners here, such as the cayenne plant, and my Ahi fantasy plant. But there's a lot of varieties where that isn't the case. And in fact, some of the varieties, the opposite is true. The two results at the end of the graph here are potentially misleading. We've got the farmer's market jalapeno and my peach ghost as well. And it might be worth not considering those because my farmer's market jalapeno, there was a mix up with the seed and I think I was growing two varieties and as well, one of my plants was severely damaged. And the peach ghost, maybe more borderline, could probably be left in, but it is worth noting that the treatment peach ghost plant was always a bit runty. It never really got off to a good start and it might have just been a bit of a rubbish plant. <laughs> so if we take those two out and look at the total yields, then it paints a much more favorable picture for the treatment varieties. There's a 57% boost here, which is very significant, that is a big gain. But let's look again at the varieties. So you can see that these gains really only come from the cayenne and the ahi fantasy varieties. The other two don't show this pattern. Now I did wonder if maybe the treatment would only show success in sort of the anum or the bakatum varieties, but we've got cayenne, which is an anum here, and then we've got the sugar rush and the ahi fantasy, which are both bakatum. So there's no particularly strong result for chili subspecies. And additionally, a really interesting result, which I excluded from the totals that you've seen because it's such an outlier, is this one. Now this is my Ahi fantasy, which was grown in a quadro, but also with all of the treatment ingredients. And you can see this just dwarfed everything else. I honestly have no idea what might have caused this outlier. It's such a strange result. So. There's a few things that I wanted to talk about before coming to any conclusion. And the first is just some of the observations I made throughout the growing season. So really early on, I was pretty confident that the treatment plants were looking a lot stronger. They were a lot healthier. They had a kind of darker green appearance. They were growing faster, a bit bushier. They just looked a lot healthier. And early on, I was really like, oh, this is gonna have some definitive results. However, what I found is that as I started to add fertilizer, so a kind of four weeks after they were potted on. All of these differences were starting to kind of level out and I wasn't seeing that variation. And another thing that I should mention is that the fertilizer that I was using is from Greenhouse Sensations. And I do think this NutriGrow fertilizer is a really strong fertilizer. I think it's a really, really good product and it would do better than most other fertilizers. So if I was using a weaker fertilizer, one that wasn't as good, maybe the treatment plants would have shown a dramatic increase, but maybe I set the baseline quite high by using that greenhouse sensations fertilizer. 
Another thing I was interested to see was whether or not there would be a difference in pepper flowering times, you know, so were we going to get earlier crops from the treatment or were they going to be later? And there was no real result there. And as well, I was interested in pepper weight, you know, so was, was the treatment going to produce these really heavy, weighty peppers compared to the control? And once again, that didn't bear out, apart from the Ahe fantasy that I just showed you. The peppers from that pot were literally twice the size of any of the other Ahe fantasy plants that I grew. What's interesting about this Ahe fantasy in particular is the size of the pods. These are gigantic. These are absolutely massive. So I have no idea what caused that. The next key thing to talk about is the limitations because they are numerous. <laughs> this experiment is very limited. And the first thing is just the sample size. So it's a very small sample size in total, but also if you look at the varieties, for example, the sugar rush, I had one plant that was treatment, one plant that was non-treatment. That is a tiny, tiny sample size. So I think it does provide a useful real world example, but we do need to be really mindful of the fact. And there were some of the plants that never even came to fruition. So for example, my Archi Norteño, I grew those and they turned out to be massive plants, but I had no peppers, you know, so that was another thing that even reduced the sample size even more. Another thing is that there might have been some confounding variables, you know, so particularly with the quad grow plants, they were stationary. They stayed in the greenhouse in one place. The other plants in pots, I tried to move around as often as I could because there might be areas of the greenhouse that are warmer, areas that are colder, areas that get more light, less light areas that get more airflow, this kind of stuff. So I tried to reduce that as much as I could, but it's a very small greenhouse, too many peppers in that greenhouse as well. So just another thing to be mindful of. And another thing is that I definitely made a few mistakes when it came to the treatment pots. These ingredients, some of them you are meant to reapply throughout the season, every kind of three or four weeks. And to be honest, I did not do a good job of that. So. There's definitely some user error that came in here as well, and maybe if I'd been more on top of it, we might have seen some more consistent results. So conclusions. I would love to say that there was a really clear result one way or the other, but you've seen the variation in the data for yourselves. It makes it really difficult for me to give you a strong, robust conclusion. I will link Greenhand Organics website in the description below and I do recommend you go and check them out. They've been brilliant to work with and they were just genuinely interested in the results of this experiment. They might have some products that do take your fancy or that you want to give a go. But the four ingredients I use to make this super mix, can I recommend them wholeheartedly? Well, the issue is that they are not cheap. These are specialist products and if I'd seen my yields kind of double or triple, then I would be pretty happy with paying that kind of cost. But as it is, the, the kind of relatively small increase, maybe 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50% yield increase, that's still an awful lot of money that you'd be laying out at the outset. So for me personally, I'm not sure it would be worth it. For you, that's a question that only you can answer. So I think that's about the best conclusion I can give you. I really hope you found this one interesting, maybe useful. Let me know in the comments below anything that you would add or anything that you think I missed out with the experiment. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. Thank you ever so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time.